morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's 10.30, not 11.30. Amen. Whatever time that we come, our hearts must always be prepared for the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have come earlier, you would have noticed that there is the cafe going on downstairs. Okay. Up, <laughs> upstairs, all right. We are underground church for God. All right. The thing is, is, it is more about fellowship, okay? This is not about feeding the whole church. This is about fellowship. And we chose this morning, and we chose the early time morning, 9, 9.30 to about 10.20, is because the three services intersect. All right? The Teochew will have finished. The Chinese and English service would have just come. So it's intersecting. So we can come and have fellowship over coffee, tea, Milo, buns and all that. So come if you, if you want to have breakfast and uh, have fellowship with one another. Alright? Thank you. Today is Pentecost Sunday. How many of us know that? What is Pentecost Sunday? It is a time when the Holy Spirit was really released upon us. It is a time of change. It is a time when the church was born. It is a time when God lives in us. It's such an important event, church. Remember that. Without Pentecost Sunday, without Pentecost, it's going to be very hard to walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's just close our eyes for a while. Father, even as we come into your presence, Lord, we come with expectation. We come, Lord, to worship you, to hear you, and to have fellowship with you. Lord, I pray that we will all lay aside everything else, Lord, except focus on the Lord. God, you have given us even this service slightly more than an hour or hour or so. Lord, you help us focus on Jesus this morning. For those who have not met the Lord even the whole week, this is the time to meet the Lord. This is the time to quieten our hearts and be still and know that He is Lord. Amen. 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 Let's rise for worship. Before the worship start, I just want to let us know that uh, at the end of service, there will be communion and uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes of prayer time so that we all can pray for one another, pray for the nation, pray for others. So this is the time, the first Sunday of the month, that we will be doing this. Amen? All right, shall we rise? Hi, morning. Ah, nice to see you all on 10.30. Okay, so, is God good? Amen. Yes, all right. He's, God is good. And all the time. Really? Really? God, so let us sing this. You are good. All the time, all the time, you are good, you are good, all the time, all the time, you are good. God, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. God, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From every nation and tongue From generation to generation We worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah We worship you For who you are We worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship. 
worship you who you are and you are good God is good you are good God you are good and your mercy endure forever Lord you are good and your mercy endure forever from every nation and tongue from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. You are good. Are good. All the time, all the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, all the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, you the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, all the time, you are good. worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you who you are You are good all the time. You are good all the time. Hallelujah. God is good, yeah? And more than good, He is also the peace of our hearts. And every time when we look for Him uh, in a broken and contrite heart, we will, we will definitely find Him. He promised that. You are the peace that guards my heart, my help in times of need. You are the hope that leads me on and brings me to my knees. And there I find you waiting. And there I find relief. So with all my heart, I worship, and unto you I'll sing, for you alone deserve all glory, for you alone deserve all praise, Father we worship and adore you, Father we long to see your face for you alone deserve all glory for you alone deserve all praise Father we love you and we worship you this day the peace 
that guards my heart, my help in times of need. You are the hope that leads me on and brings me to my knees. There I find you waiting. There I find relief. So with all my heart, I worship, and unto you I'll sing. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we worship and adore you. Father, we long to see your face. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we love you. And we worship you this day. Let's sing that to God again. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we worship and adore you. Father, we long to see your face, for you alone deserve all glory, for you alone deserve all praise. Father, we love you, and we worship you this day. Father, we love you, and we worship you this day. They were going to uh, sing a new song as well. I believe it's the first time we sing this together as a, as a church. So if you can follow, uh, try to sing along, but if not... Maybe you can just uh, sing and listen as a prayer uh, and let the song bless your heart, okay? I'm asking you to help me with my burden I'm asking you to heal me of my pain Come rest me in heaven's open pastures Come bathe me in your cool refreshing rain I'm asking you to cleanse me in my conscience I'm asking you to take away my shame Your blood upon my heart's desire Oh Lord, I want to hear you once again God of heaven you search my heart, consecrate me, set me apart, lose your wind now, spirit come refill, I'm asking you to bend me to your will, I'm asking you to bend to your will mm -hmm. I'm asking you to teach 
Teach me about your kingdom. I'm asking you to guide me on this way. To have the strength to face up to the challenge. The joy we need to overcome each day. God of heaven, won't you search my heart? Consecrate me, set me apart. Lose your wind now, Spirit, come refill. I'm asking you to send me to your will. I'm asking you to bend me to your will. I'm asking you for reconciliation. To bind our hearts for us to work as one. Remove the hurt, the pain, and all of Cause on that cross the work of Christ was done. Amen. God of heaven, won't you search my heart? Consecrate me, set me apart. Lose your wind now, Spirit, come. I'm asking you to bend me to your will. I'm asking you to bend me to your will. I'm asking you to bend me to your will. Invite all of us to remain in this attitude of worship, in this atmosphere of worship, where we ask the Holy Spirit. Reading from scripture this morning from the book of Isaiah, verses 1 to 30. And as we read this together, I invite you to meditate on this word as well. Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 13. And I read The branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stem of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, the young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out His hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of His people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters 
of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will vanish, and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile towards Ephraim. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And as you're seated, let us, can we have a less reverb? Thank you. Thank you, Cla uh, Kelvin. Thank you, Clarence, for reading. As we are seated, let us just come to the Lord. Lord, today is Pentecost Sunday. We remember your spirit coming so mightily upon your servants, upon your disciples. We ask you, Lord, today, even as we are here, your Spirit does the same thing for us to do and to will in our lives. Illuminate our eyes, O oh Lord, and quicken our spirit in you this day. Teach us your ways, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. By the time Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7 to 10, well, this period in the reign of King Ahaz, two bad kings, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, they have already divided the nation to the north, the northern kingdom Israel, and to the south, the southern kingdom Judah. And they have entered into civil war. Civil war means brother against brother, brothers killing brothers, bad kings. That's the story of Israel when it comes to their kings. There were some good ones. I think we all read, we have read before, there are some good kings, but there are not very many. Most of them were corrupted. They were wicked and some even ruled without any clue. They don't even know why they are there. You know? They're kind of like being thrusted into their position. Even the good ones were not good absolutely. And we all know, we all have flaws, isn't it? Anyone perfected here? Yet, not yet, isn't it? So, they, they, they even, even the good ones had self-interest and then we know that a few of them had pride and lust and they, all these things got in their way and they led the nation away from God and into one disaster after another. And this cycle kept going on. And so here in the four chapters, 7 to 10, we... We, we read and it looks as though it's filled with a lot of terrible news because God is going to act in His judgment and in destruction and in the scattering of the people away from the land as well as captivity into foreign lands. And, and, and if you read all of these, it looks as though it is going to be pretty hopeless for Israel, for the nation, the people of God. And all of this is because they have been rebellious to God. They have been unfaithful to God. They, they, they have been, they've just done one thing. They just say, God, we don't need you. They've taken a departure from God. And therefore, in chapter 10, only a remnant will remain. But I want us to realize that this is uh, one package uh, of, uh, of some, somebody says, one whole unit of prophecy. Yes, it is. It's a whole unit of prophecy. But if the prophecy were to end at chapter 10, can you imagine how despairing it is? How you, hopeless it is? There's nothing great coming out of this. But God is, listen to me, my brothers and sisters, God is always merciful. God is always faithful and God is always full of grace. Hear this again. God is always merciful, always faithful and full of grace. So, what happens is that we are going to look at chapter 11 now because there is a climax here, a climax in which the prophetic statement is going to be given to the people of God, the children of God, that there is a hope coming. My dear children, there is a hope coming. Now, three stumps. In Singapore, we don't see very many three stumps. And the reason is very simple. We are a very organized nation. 
uh, our, our trees are all subplanted. So ant parks comes around, they look at the tree on the street, this doesn't look very healthy anymore, they get people to come, they chop it off. And what they do is that when they cut it off, even the stumps and the roots are ripped out from the, from the ground so that the next plant, can, next tree can come in. It's all subplanted. We are so organized. But in countries with forests, like if you go to Indonesia, loggers, when they come and they take the trees down, they will leave the stumps there. They won't take anything away. Tree stumps do look dead. I've seen them before when I was in the United States. And this is a picture that Isaiah painted to tell Israel, to tell the children of God, to tell us there is a hope, who this hope is. And the people will be very familiar. I will tell you why. Because they have seen the Assyrians come and, and, and trash the land and destroy the land. And they will see the Babylonia come and trash the land again also. And in fact, the scripture says that there will be no tree left standing. There will be stumps all over. However, out of the dead, life can and do emerge. The remnants will come and see that out of the dead tree, the stump will come a shoot. A shoot will come out of the stump of Jesse. From his root, roots, a branch will bear fruit. Now, I'm not going to go through and read every uh, uh, verse because Clarence has done it for us, but I'm going to just explain some of the verses and for us to be enlightened by what Isaiah is writing here and what it means for you and I. But the first one is important because it sets the stage for all of us to understand, not only the children of God, so for the first point is, why does he go right and say the stump of Jesse? Two reasons. One is the moment you say Jesse, who is the, who, who is the son of Jesse? Anyone? The most famous son of Jesse? King David. He was the anointed king by God. God chose him. God chose him. And so, when, they re when he refers to Jesse, straight away the people know there is a king coming. There is a king coming. But why, why have the word stump of Jesse? Stump of Jesse means this. It is as dead as it is. The kings that have come from Jesse have all been as good as dead. They are so terrible in what they have done. So much so that let's go back to square one. And the stump of Jesse, from there, a shoot, a life is going to come. So the first word that he uses is a shoot will come out from the stump of Jesse. Now shoots, as you can see, happens to come out from the what? From the above ground, isn't it? It's just a, a, a little sprig that comes out above ground from the, from the stump. Now what does that mean? It means very simple that from the lineage of what? Of Jesse will come this Messiah, this King. But then there's a second phrase there. It says, from the roots of the, a branch will appear. Now what does that mean then? Now, if that, if that stump, if you can see, and, and that stump is the, the lineage of Jesse, but the root predates Jesse, isn't it? The roots came before the family of Jesse. So what Isaiah is bringing back is that before Jesse, so before Jesse means it is what? Let's go back all the way to creation. It is God. And so, in this very uh, one line, what has Isaiah done? What Isaiah has done is to let us know that this branch, this hope, this Messiah is the king promised, but he's not only just a man, he is man and God. And in him, things will be different because there will be great life coming ahead because it is fruitful. But why is he different from all the rest of the kings? Why will this branch be different? Because this branch will be anointed by the Holy Spirit. But more than anointing, the word there is the Holy Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. In other words, it will dwell in him. And this is where the, the, the energy, the power, the, what, is, what is there for this king, he, he will be different because he will no longer think logically, earthly logic, but he, all of his wisdom will come from the gods, the, the throne of God from on high. 
his wisdom, his understanding, his counsel, and his might, all of his knowledge. So it is not going to be earthly logic. You know, we have seen a lot of people with earthly logic, and what happens is that it brings us into disaster, nation after nation. I mean, let me just take an aside. A bunch of kids, children, gets killed by gunfire, by a shooter in the United States. First thing they say is, oh, it is a mental problem. Other people say that it is a gun, gun's problem. Let me tell you what is a problem, the fear of the Lord. That is the problem. Go back to all the way to the ground, to the foundation of things. When you have no fear of the Lord, you will kill. Let me just say this. Therefore, it is not about logic. It is about who? The Spirit of God working in the person. Now, the next phrase is important because it's about the fear of the Lord. He will have in him the fear of the Lord. Unlike all the rest of the kings, he will have fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord, remember I've shared with you, it is reverence for God, who God is. But it's also learning to love God. It's also embracing who God is. That is why in the next line it says that he not only fears God, he delights in it. Because why? Because he is in such great love, and he embraces who God is. And therefore, from there will come what? From there will come decision-making. You know, he will not be like all the rest of the corrupted kings. When he makes a judgment, it is not a judgment by what he sees or hears. You know, it's very interesting. You are the king, you are the judged. You know, those days, the king is the judge. A rich man comes and there's a problem with a poor man. What do you, who do you think will win? Obviously, the rich lie, because you know why? It lines the pocket of the king. So, there's so much corruption or gossips that he will hear and he will make a decision. Unlike that, those kings, this king will do something very different. He's informed. His decisions are informed by the judgment. And his judgments and, and decisions are informed by the righteousness and the justice of God. And all of it is because the Holy Spirit is at work in his life. And so, in his justice, he will act against the wicked. And the verse here says that with, a, you know, with the rod of his mouth, by the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. And doesn't that bring us to a knowledge of something or a, a reference to something by a word? Which part of the Bible says by a word? Anyone knows? Today is the day of Pentecost. I hope there's enlightenment. Let's go back to Genesis. And God created the heavens and the earth by a word. You see, Isaiah, as he's doing this whole, as he's, as he's writing out this whole part of the prophecy of hope, he is bringing the people to see that, hey, it's not just a man. He is this king coming. He is God himself. For by a word... By a word, he will slay the wicked. And so, at the end of the day, what will he look like? What is his identity? What is his thumbprint? His thumbprint will be righteousness and faithfulness. These will be his governance. And always, always, justice and faithfulness to God. I mean, I, don't you love to have a king like this? Don't you love to have a leader like this? Because what will it be like? What is the picture that we get? Isaiah continues to paint that picture and as, as he was reading, as Clarence was reading verse 6 to verse 8, I don't know whether you have certain pictures in your mind that, you know, those which are enemies are enemies no more. The hunter and prey no more for the wolf and the, and, the, and the lion and the leopard and even the bears, they now are in harmony together with those which are their prey. You know? I, I like this one. It is as though now the whole sin is flipped about. It confounds earthly logic, doesn't it? I mean, I was, as I was written this, I said, what would Richard Attenborough say? Cannot be. Uh. Oh, no, he can. It can't be, you know? 
It is not possible because it is not logical. It is against nature. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. What is happening here is against the order of God. It is very unnatural in God's economy. What is natural in God's economy is that there is harmony in the kingdom. It will be a kingdom of harmony. And if you read and look at verse 6, it says that the calf, the lion and the yearling will be together. It's just like, you know, the lion and, and the lion is so tame that you can actually, you know, just put a, 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 a leash on it and then just walk because a child will lead them. And let me again go back to a reference. You see, look at Isaiah. He always refers things for us to understand. When he says a child will lead them, what does it come to mind? For unto us a child is born. See, it's all these references back to say that there is a promise from God. By the way, some of us have cats. I know some of us have cats. It's very difficult to walk a cat. Try to put a leash on the cat. The cat will sort of fight you first, you know. But something happens here. It is no longer a place where there are adversaries, but a place where there is harmony. But more so than that, the harmony also brings to us a kingdom of peace because there will be no more wars. And because He is here, not only is there no more wars, He's a man, He is a God who is a purveyor of peace. And what will happen is that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the water covers the sea. I know some of us, how many of us have done scuba diving before? Just put our hands. Don't you not very adventurous people? How many of you have done uh, snorkeling before? 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 Every breath you take is God. Every breath you take is God. What a glorious, wonderful, wonderful future! This is the vision. There is no more war. I'm tired of wars. I'm tired of many things. I'm tired of people killing one another. I'm tired of illness and sickness. Aren't you tired? You mean you're not tired? Uh? I'm very tired of it, you know. I'm very tired of things which are uncertain. There's only one certainty and that is the Christ will come again. The Messiah will come again. The question about it is this. When will it happen? When will we have this kingdom? Of the branch. And we see it in chapter uh, verse 10 and 11. And the two verses starts with these three words. In that day. In that day, the root of Jesse, in that day, the Lord will reach. In other words, a time is going to come when the Messiah comes and completely takes over, he completes his rule. In the Christian theological word is the kingdom is consummated. There will be a kingdom where he is king. But friends, it is just more than that. It is much more than that because as you read down the line, when the branch comes, at this time, it, in that day, when He comes, number one, what will happen in verse 12 and 13 is that He will remove all enemies, including the enemy, Satan himself. Number two, it is going to be a kingdom of restoration. Verse 12 and 13 tells us that Ephraim and Judah will no longer battle each other. Brothers will no longer fight each other or kill each other. They will be one. Because this branch, this Messiah will make them one people in God again. Isn't that wonderful? But I have more wonderful news for you. The Messiah is going to bring these remnants to Himself. And the third thing that's going to happen is this. The Messiah is also Messiah to the Gentiles. Because in verse 10, it says that it is the nations who will rally to Him. It is not only the not only the people, the Israel who will gather to him, but it is the nations who will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. His resting place will be glorious. 
He will gather all of us. He will restore us, all of the nations, all of us who believe back to the Father. It fulfills God's promise to Abraham, doesn't it? That he told Abraham, God told Abraham, out of you, the nations will be blessed and you and I are blessed. You and I are included. I don't know whether that excites you. To be included in God's hope. Not only for the now, but for the ever and ever and ever. You know, friends, Paul writes this and Paul acknowledges this in Romans 15. He says that there is hope and we know that this hope is Christ Jesus. And he says this, For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness. You see, he says that whatever God has told the patriarchs, He has finished. And He is the one who not only told them, but He actually did it. That the Messiah, Christ, has come. But not only that, that in order, in order that the, the Gentiles might glory, glorify God for His mercy, that we are, what? We know that then from the Jews, we receive God's glory. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And then verse 10 says this, Again, it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with His people. It's not only the people, of the, the Jewish people, God's people, chosen people who will, what, sing, and they sing to us, to let us hear. Now, there's an invitation for us to sing with God's people, and verse 11 goes further. When we sing, other people will hear too. We are testimony, witnesses unto the Lord. And again, in verse 12, Isaiah, it says, again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, and in him will the Gentiles hope. Your hope and my hope is in Christ Jesus. Nothing else. Not on our riches, not on our intelligence. You know, every time I talk about intelligence of men, I, it goes, I go back to the, you know, the wisdom of men is like dung to the Lord. It's, it is, these are the things that comes to mind. And at the end of the day, Paul writes that, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and, let me just add, all peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound. You may be so filled with hope. When we read this, when you read this, when you hear this, have you ever asked yourself, yeah, may the God of hope fill you with all joy, but I'm not very joyous. Leh. Or at all peace. We've got to ask ourselves pretty honestly, are you joyous in your salvation? Are you like the man who is healed and he goes leaping and praising God? Each morning when you wake up, it is a, do you realize it is a gift of God? But the greater gift is that you have a hope in Christ Jesus. Are you leaping for joy? Are you like what, what is written here by Paul and he refers it from Isaiah 2 that when we sing, we sing that other people will also then extol the Lord. Do we, are we a voice for the Lord? Am I wrapped up in peace? And I, I use the word wrapped up because you know why? There are so many things all around us that, that can give us such a tough time. Are you at peace? Are you wrapped up in peace? Are you delighted in this hope that Jesus will come again? How many of us, I've asked you all this before, how many of you, are, how am I even... <laughs> Am I even waiting in expectation of Christ Jesus to come? Or are we so much in love with this world that we say, Jesus, can you delay 
a little bit more. I know it's, I know, I'm going to say this, another day I will, I will deal with this, but you know, some of us are very frightened about death. We'll talk about death another day. But you ask yourself, how do I keep in hope? You know, pastor, tell me, how do I then therefore keep in hope when I feel like a dead stump? How do I keep at it? Now, this is where I want to share a little story that I heard from Dr. Lim K. Tam. I hope you remember him uh, at this pulpit. And Ketan was sharing this one day when we all have lunch at lunch together. And it's called the swim test. Actually, it's a mice swim test. In 19, I'm going to ask, uh, can you all play the video for me, which is the next slide. Uh, play this video for me. In 1957, a scientist by the name of Kirk Richter, he and his team experimented on how on, about mice Talk about behavior. They took some domesticated mice and they put these mice into a water container, a jug like this, and they, they look at them and swimming, you know? And he was asking himself, let's see how long they can swim in the water. Now, the domesticated, these domesticated mice, these domesticated mice, they could swim around how many hours? Make a guess. How many hours? Somebody. Anybody. How long do you think they could swim? Samuel, just throw me an answer. How many hours? 20 hours. Between 40 to 60 hours. They could tread water between 40 to 60 hours. Then after that, they die. Actually, it was a very cruel experiment. Then what they did was that they took street mice, wild mice, and they put them in the same condition. How long do you think this mice survived in the water? In how? Guess. 40 what? 40 hours. 15 minutes. And they died. Huh. We thought those are street. Like, you know, street gangsters are all very tough, right? We're all very not, huh? It's different. It flipped the other way around. So what did they do? It was very interesting because these scientists, what they did was that they put these street mice in the water and they were struggling. Sorry. After a few minutes, they took the mice out, dried them up, warmed them, and warmed up the water, then put the mice in again. And these mice all struggled, struggled. And after a few minutes, they took them out again, they dried them, warmed them up, you know, and then put them in this warm water again. And that went through a few times. And they said, okay, now we will do the same experiment again. But this time, let's see how long they will survive. How long do you think these mice survived? Eric, just give me a number. Lah. Don't be scared. No. Three hours. 40 to 60 hours. 40 to 60 hours. The question about this is this. What happened between the, the mice that, you know, that didn't have any, any, any experience you know, uh, in, in being, being taken care of, and the mice now, why did they survive 40 to 60 hours? See, friends, when you have tasted care, and you have tasted mercy, and you have tasted grace, and rescue, and love, something happens when you are in this, a tough time, a tough position, you have hope. You have hope that someone will continue, then come and pick you up. So you continue and start thinking about mind over matter, but you continue in the hope that you have to be rescued. The Lord says, or the psalmist says, Come and taste that the Lord is good. Psalm 30, 34, 8. See, once you have experienced this hope, you, you will be able to continue to live on. 
But then we come to this question, how do we keep this hope alive? And this, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters, is found in Isaiah 12. You see, Isaiah 7 to 10 is all the bad news. God is going to come, judgment coming. 11 is this, there is a hope coming. And the people have not seen the hope come. How do they continue with the hope? God is a wonderful God. He doesn't just end at 11. He brings them to a 12. What is 12 all about? If you have your Bibles with you, you know, really turn with me to uh, 12. I, I'm not, I didn't put it up on the screen because I want you all to engage in the Scriptures. Look at that. And let's let me read to you in that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away. You have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Verse 4, in that day you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known all the nations that he, what He has done and proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. You want to know what is the answer? How do we keep in hope? The answer is worship. The answer is worship. Something happens to us when we worship. When we worship, we, we contrast ourselves with who God is, His holiness, His, not only His holiness, but we see His grace over our brokenness. God, you were angry, but you're no longer angry. You turn your face away from being angry with me. Your grace is so, so much. Your salvation is ours now. You are our salvation. So I'm comforted and I'm not afraid. And every time we continue to worship Him, we glorify Him, we amplify Him. And when we amplify Him, He, he magnifies our hope. Every time He is made larger, our hope is also made greater. Some weeks ago, I shared certain words with you all. I said that faith comes from hearing the word, doesn't it? That's in the Bible. And I said that prayer sets, sets faith ablaze. It continues to burn and, and set us a flame for the Lord in our faith. But let me say this, that worship magnifies hope. I know, brothers and sisters, life is full of challenges. And like you, I mean, I'm, not, I'm no different from you. There are days which we struggle to keep up the joy and the peace and hope. Sometimes we try to Keep it up, you know, like a facade, but it must come from the within. But why is it that we can't come find it from the within? Because we feel, you know, like I said, we feel like dead stumps. Some of us are even afraid to hope anymore because of our own experiences. But today, today what I want us to do, what I want to do is to set us free, to ask God, I can't set you free, but to ask God to set you free to worship Him in all of His splendor. To ask God to bring His shoot to grow in your lives and my life. So we can see what fire can burn in us afresh. And so today is Communion Sunday. And before we join in Communion, let us glorify and honour Him, and so let Him magnify our hope. Our hope not only for today, not only for every day, but our hope for that day. So I'm going to ask Ming Hao and Natalie to come up.
And let us all join together to worship the Lord. But before that, let me just pray. Father, thank you for your branch that comes from Jesse's stump. Thank you for the shoot that comes. He who is Christ Jesus. Today, Lord, whatever situation my brothers and my sisters are in, I want to pray and ask you, your spirit, to set each of us free. Free just to worship you. Now, my brothers and sisters, can you all stand? Can we all just stand? And you at home also, please just stand. And you just raise your hands to the Lord. And say to the Lord, Lord, set me free. Set me free to truly worship your name. To lift up your name. Because Lord, when you are magnified, made big, made great, when we can see you great, our hope is magnified. Oh Holy Spirit, this day is we remember Pentecost Sunday. just ask you to make, be made manifest in each of our lives and for those of us who have not received the Holy Spirit let the Spirit of just come and descend right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit just come right now Lord set us free Lord to worship your name to say how great you are Lord how great you are how great you are Splendor of the King, yes, just lift up there. clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, darkness tries. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? All will see how great, how great is our God. God is three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? See how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. Hallelujah. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names. Hallelujah.
and sisters as we partake of the communion this morning remember always it is Christ Jesus who invites all of us to this table and in Him partakers of this communion listen in Him in Him is your hope and my hope and brothers and sisters let me just say this I pray I really pray those three lines that I gave you all faith comes from hearing the word prayer sets faith in place and worship magnifies hope. if we do that every day when we come to church we know what it means to be in the midst of his presence because we will have been in the midst of his presence every day when we come to communion we will know what it means because we commune at what He has given us, His body and His blood, and therefore His hope for us. Let us together partake. Let us take this together. Let us take the cup.
Acts 11.40 In the old days we would have started service by 10 minutes only. But now we have finished basically the service. But before we end, we've said that the first Sunday of the month, we will have prayer meeting for us. So I'm going to take about maybe 15-20 minutes for us to pray so that we all have the privilege to pray for one another for events around the world and let our voices be heard by the Lord. So this morning, gather yourselves in the three or four right now and we will pray basically for three categories only. Three or four. Amen. Gather yourselves in the three or four. Amen. Amen. We will have we will have much time for lunch. Very early. Amen. The first the first category. I would like us to pray is this the war in Ukraine nobody likes war it is a terrible thing to have war and let's pray for God's peace and reconciliation to overcome all hatred conflict and war church I believe there are a lot of war mongers around there are a lot of war mongers around let us pray that the peacemakers would have their say rather than the war mongers pray for peace because a lot of innocent people are suffering. Innocents have died because of this war. Pray for peace. And secondly, thank God that the COVID-19 situation is lessening. Pray that it will not come back again. So we have heard that it may come back, but pray that it will not come back again. Alright? Pray, maybe for the next five minutes, take this to the Lord in prayer. Amen? Alright, let's start. Amen.
you, Lord. We thank you for your hand upon Ukraine. We thank you, Lord, for your hand upon the COVID situation even right now. Lord, Lord, you preside over this, Lord. Let there be peace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For the second slide, I just want to ask us to pray for the board, for the pastors and myself. Church, it is right that we pray for you people and we do pray for you people. But we're just wondering how many of you pray for us. Pray for the leadership of the church. Pray for us that we will be on the same mind with God and with each other. Pray that God will lead us so that we will be able to lead all of us too. Don't take things for granted. Alright? Please don't take things... Right? Okay, don't take things for granted. Pray for us all. Amen. Pray for Pastor John, Pastor Lai, myself, Deacon Hao Sang, Deaconess Sylvia, Claudia, Joash, In Hao, Kami. Okay, for the Chinese community also, they have Pastor Lai, Joash, Sister Tatni, Sister Hui Ming, the Teochew Ministry, we have Brother Ki Heng, Brother Hyo Kun, Sister Siwa, Sister Jenny. Pray for all of us who are in position to influence the church, the services. All right, pray that we are all in one mind. Amen. And one more thing, pray for if you know of anyone who is sick right now, pray for that person. If you know someone who is sick, pray for that person. All right, let's take about five minutes to pray. Amen. 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 And for the last category, we're going to pray. The 
last category is to pray for one another. If there is any prayer need among your groups, bring it up and we pray for one another even right now. We pray for one another that we will cover each other. Amen. Alright, let's, let's just pray for one another. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, church. Church, I want us to understand this, alright? Right now, you have some prayer requests that you have made in your group. There are some people who have given some prayer requests in your group. I would like us to keep them in prayer for the whole week. Keep them in prayer for the whole week. Now you got something to pray about. You got someone to pray about. For the whole week. Remember them in prayer. Alright? Okay, before, uh, before we leave, before I give the benediction, uh, just one last announcement. For those who have uh, cars who have been parking in uh, level one, level, level two, I always forget we are underground church. <laughs> okay, those who have been parking in level two, please carry on, okay? Uh, you are allowed to accept when you see a cone placed on the parking lot, especially at the pastor's lot. Okay, right now, pastors and me, we don't have cars, okay? But there are, uh, are invited speakers some weeks that they may need a, a, a parking lot. So when you see a cone there, please don't park there, okay? If you don't see the cone, yeah, please park. Alright? Okay, come, let's... Alright, let's just uh, focus upon the Lord. Let me give us the benediction. Let's rise. Let's raise our hands to the Lord, you know. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. And all God's people say, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Give a clap to the Lord. Amen. All right. Pray for one another. Don't forget one another for the whole week. Amen.